We are the loneliest society there has ever been. There's a study that asks Americans, how many close friends do you have who you could call on in a crisis? And when they started doing it years ago, the most common answer was five. Today, the most common answer is none. I learned a lot about how this is affecting us from a man called Professor John Cassiopo, who's at the University of Chicago, one of the leading experts in the world about loneliness. He proved a few things. First thing he proved is that for a human being, being acutely lonely is as bad for your health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. If you become really lonely, that releases as much of the stress hormone cortisol as if you are punched in the face by a stranger. This is a terrible thing for us. And I asked Professor Cassiopo, well, why is it? Why is it so devastating for us? And he said to me, why do you and I exist? One of the reasons we exist is because our ancestors on the savannas of Africa were really good at one thing. They weren't faster than the animals they took down a lot of the time. They weren't bigger than the animals they took down a lot of the time. But they were much better at banding together into tribes and cooperating. Just like bees evolved to need a hive, humans evolved to need a tribe. And we are the first human beings ever to try to live without tribes. It's making us feel terrible. Picture a, a bee that decided it was going to live apart from the hive. It would go crazy. It would start acting in a way that was completely haywire. Now imagine telling that bee that it was feeling that way just because of a, a pollen imbalance in its brain, right? You can see how that would be a bizarre way of thinking. So what I wanted to think about is, given that loneliness is driving this epidemic of depression and anxiety, it's one of the nine factors I write about in my book, Lost Connections, what's the antidepressant for that, right? What do we do about that? And one of the heroes of my book, Lost Connections, is an amazing man called Dr. Sam Everington. And Sam was really uncomfortable, because as a GP, he had loads of patients coming to him who were depressed and anxious. Like me, he's not opposed to chemical antidepressants, but he could see that they were taking the edge off for some people, but they weren't solving the problem for most of his patients. So he decided to pioneer a different approach. One day, a woman came to see him called Lisa Cunningham, who I got to know quite well. Sam said to Lisa, don't worry, I'll, I'll carry on giving you these drugs. I'm also going to prescribe something else. I'm going to prescribe for you to take part in a group. First meeting they had, Lisa was literally physically sick with anxiety. But a couple of things happened. The first thing was Lisa noticed they had something to talk about that wasn't how shit they felt, right? Normally with depressed and anxious people, we either drug them or we give them places to talk about their distress, both of which have value. But in this case, they decided they were going to learn gardening. They decided they were going to get their fingers in the soil. There's a lot of evidence that exposure to the natural world is a really powerful antidepressant. The other thing that happened is, as the weeks and months went by, they started to form a tribe. They started to get to know and care about each other. And they did what human beings do when we form tribes. They started to solve each other's problems. One of the guys in the group had been thrown out of his home and was sleeping on the bus. Everyone else was like, of course you're depressed and anxious if you're sleeping on a bus, right? They started to uh, pressure the local authority to get him a home. They succeeded. It was the first time they'd done something for someone else in years. It made them feel great. The way Lisa put it to me, as the garden began to bloom, we began to bloom. There was a study in Norway of a very similar program that found it was more than twice as effective as chemical antidepressants. I think for a simple reason, it was dealing with some of the reasons, the disconnection from other people, the disconnection from the natural world. The most effective ways of dealing with depression and anxiety are the ones that deal with the reasons why we feel so bad in the first place.